में No genocide allowed in Gaza. No genocide allowed in Gaza. Not in our name. No genocide allowed in Gaza, not in our name. We're a Jewish organization opposed to the Israel's government's uh, genocidal campaign. We are Jewish, so that is right. The Bund, Yiddish Bund, was a Jewish uh, anti-fascist organization before the Holocaust. We were the biggest Jewish organization. You were the biggest Jewish organization? Yes, bigger than the Zionists. The Zionists were only 8% of the Jewish people in Europe. Okay. And then they okay. ran away. What is the difference in between? The Jewish yeah, Bund and the Zionists? Jewish, like according to you. Like I was about to say, you know, the Zionists, they ran away, you know, and they told everybody, just run away, you know, like the ones that were their friends and that they were members, you know, 60,000 from Germany were saved and 1,843 in Hungary were saved. All the rest were just left to be sent to the death camps. Mm -hmm. And it was the Jewish Bund that fought against uh, the Nazis. You know, they were the partisans, the first partisans in Russia and in the invasion of Russia by the Nazis. What would you say to the people that say that if you call someone Zionist, you actually say that... That so they are supporting say, genocide, the, yes. The, the, the Jewish that are here say that Zionist is actually saying Jewish. Yes, I mean, Zionists are Jewish, yes. And there is a Jewish right to self-determination because we are an oppressed nation, obviously. But to take that power, that right, and turn it into its opposite and deny the very same right to another people is not, not possible. Do you think do it do you think that it was justified what happened on October seventh? Do you think it was justified for any other like crime that happened in the past? Do you think it was justified? Oh there were many crimes committed by uh, the uh, resistance fighters of the Palestinians, yes. But uh, uh, in general, their strategy was not, you know, genocidal. It was not, you know, seeking to kill as many Israelis as possible. No, their strategy was to take hostages in order to exchange them for the hostages that are held by Israel. Wait, do you think it was justified? 1,200 causalities? Well, it's not up to me. It's the international law, which says that any, you know, occupied you people have a right to resist with armed struggle even. It's, you know, a UN, uh, you know, a legal right but to resist. Do you, do you condemn what what the Hamas did on October 7 to to, to slaughter more than 1,200 people, an innocent victim. Well, the, the official figure is 1,139 uh, Israelis who, who lost their lives on October the 7th. Of those, 323 are soldiers who were fighting with guns. Uh, 57 were border oh, so police. So because they have guns, that doesn't count? Well, they were trying to kill the Palestinians, so the Palestinians, you know, fought back and then 200 Palestinian fighters were, were killed. That's why it was initially 1,400, the number. Yeah, but that doesn't answer my question. Well, it's, that's that conflict, you know, when they're living under occupation, and like they, I said, in international law, they have a right to armed resistance. To, to so it was justified according to you? According to international law, not according to me. So according to I don't international like, I don't law, like. you think it was justified? It's legal, yeah, it was a legal uh, military operation. 
except for the violations of uh, human rights. You know, there were some uh, war crimes that were committed by either Hamas, which is uh, limited, and uh, there was a lot of civilians who crossed over the uh, broken fence, you know, who came to loot and, and to uh, commit crimes against Israelis, yes. You know, Israelis didn't have that much even to gather and to just like ask for the hostages to be released. Do you think we should just let their day and not having nobody coming here and disturb their event? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you mean. So you're coming here on this six months kind of yes. anniversary after the, the terror attacks and some of them are are gathering because they have some member of their family who actually died. Do you think it's justified that you come here and at the corner of the heaven and just yeah. like uh, saying actually the opposite? Yes, because I want the, this conflict to end. So I think they should negotiate an end to it. They should exchange hostages. Let's start off right away with all the women and children. Exchange all of our people for all of their people who are held hostage by Israel. And there's thousands. But you know that those people have have no Blood power over the decision. You know that those people oh, are just coming here no. and gather uh -uh. and just... Jewish people have a great power. Even one Jewish pe person like me can have an effect upon the course of, of Jewish politics. Because Jewish people listen to each other. And that's why some are upset that I'm here, because they know that I'm saying things that they don't have any answer to. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I have... Uh, Genocide you are? Oh, it seems like you are. No, you I'm are? Uh, opposing the genocide in Gaza, and I uh, say not in our name, Nish so Tofin Zaganome. You're Jewish, in Yiddish. Jewish. I'm second generation uh, okay. Jewish survivor. Yes, my mother's from the Warsaw Ghetto, okay. and my father's from Lublin. Sure. And her brother was a partisan who fought against the Nazis, not like the Zionists who ran away and did nothing to save the I, Jewish I don't people. I think our Jewish background justified bad opinions on Israel. But I'll, let me ask you this, because you seem to care about human rights. What's your all, opinion? Yeah, all human rights, answer. including Jewish human rights. Can I ask you your opinion on this? And yes. we can talk about other issues. What do you feel about 76 years of Palestinians living in refugee camps? You know about that, I right? think they should have a right of return. Okay, so let's say I agree with you. They should have the right of return to where their grandparents or wherever their parents came from in Israel. Yeah. Until that happens, do you think it's fair that Palestinian leaders keep them locked up in refugee camps? Israel doesn't lock up the refugee camp. That's the Palestinians who do that. No. It's not? No, it's the countries in which they're residing. In uh, Lebanon, for well, instance... Well, as you know, about half of Palestinian refugees live inside the Palestinian territories, right? West Bank and Gaza. You know Gaza is like half refugees. Gaza's 80% refugees from the towns that they reoccupied on, the on October the 7th. I'm talking about the actual camps. The point is, let's just like stick to one of the two populations, right? Now they're all let's, refugees. Let's say I agree with you. They should, they should be allowed to return to Israel, right? Do we think until that day happens, they should live decent, noble lives, dignified lives? Yes, and, so, and they were uh, taking care of themselves to some extent, you know, before October the 7th. Uh, you know, Gaza was uh, surviving, think, even on think, 100 trucks a day, you know, they were surviving. I don't think a Palestinian kid being raised in a refugee camp, I don't think it's giving him a fair shot at life. And I think that's, that is anti-Zionism manifested right there. That is anti-Israel policy, right? So it's not Zionism that put them in the camps. It's the war against Zionism. What do you no? mean? In 48, they were that displaced. That was the war against Israel that did that. In 48, they attacked the Palestinian no villages. That's why they left. Why do you think the Palestinians would leave? You know, if they weren't afraid Palestinian for their lives. Wasn't there a war against the Jews in 1947? Right after the UN There were 500 back. villages that were emptied by massacres. You know, most, 75 most killed in each village. Most villages left on their own without seeing an IDF soldier. And the ones that were evicted by Israeli soldiers, right? You know about Plan Dalet. You know, See, then you know about, about Plan de Yeah, what was Plan de That was an expulsion, an ethno cleansing of it the uh, Palestinians. Sure, it was making sure the frontiers of the Jewish state were not prone to take it, being taken over by bases or taken over by Arab armies. To frontiers. You want to talk about frontiers? You know, the Zionists, they went beyond that's, the frontiers okay. that were set I'm by the sticking, partition plan. Let's keep it on one issue at a time. They were given 40, 52%, you know, of the land of I, Palestine, and they took 78%. News, very good. That's I, in 48. I, I don't think... Right? Okay, you know so, that. You know that, don't you? I, I don't know what you... No, I don't. I think the partition the war, plan. Don't you know about the partition plan? I care plan? that Palestinians leave. Yeah, I do. So that's right. the only legal basis that Israel has, you know, to claim its, you know, legitimacy that, upon. No, it, no, it's not. That was a rec that was a recommendation that was rejected by the Arab side. It's null and void. It, it would have been a treaty had the Arabs accepted it. No, you know international law. Yeah, Israel rejected it. 
because they went beyond the frontiers. They wouldn't accept the limitations, no, you know, of 52%. Once the Arab League rejected the 